Hello and welcome to another Euros edition of the Dream Team Professor podcast. My name is Scott and in this episode we're going to be doing a Group D preview looking at France, Netherlands, Poland and Austria. Taking a look at their form in qualifying and then these recent friendlies. Who the set piece takers will be throughout the tournament. Who's grabbed the goals and assists in qualifying. And then what players would make my top dream team picks. Please do excuse the voice. I've been away on a three day stag do in Tenerife. Um, and I've either drank some cheap vodka or I've been shouting too much uh, on the nights out and it's wrecked my throat a little bit. But we've got just a couple of days left until the start of the Euros and we need to get through these group previews. So let's get going and we'll have Group E and F following within the next 24 hours as well. So let's get straight to it with the Netherlands. Um, so they faced Poland in the first fixture they finished second in the group behind France um, but won all other matches so they lost twice to France but won all of their other games so eight matches played six matches won and just the two defeats um, beat Scotland 4-0 in a friendly lost 2-1 to Germany in a recent friendly but then their two most recent friendlies right before the Euros begin they've had a 4-0 win against Canada and a 4-0 win against Iceland, who just beat England while I was away. So really good form for the Netherlands going into this tournament. Two clean sheets and eight goals scored in these two matches. Um, in qualifying, two goals a game, basically 2.1. And then 0.9 goals conceded per game. Um, so defence, not terrible, but scoring plenty of goals. The penalty taker, it's been announced uh, that it is going to be Virgil van Dijk as the penalty taker. So a centre-back taking penalties um, a bit crazy seeing as they've got Memphis to pay who's had a really good um, record on penalties but they came out and said before the tournament started that Virgil van Dijk would be the penalty taker for Holland free kicks could be Cody Gakbo, um, Veerman or Memphis Depay and the corners exactly the same Gakpo, Veerman and Depay goal scorers Stengs got free Gakpo got free and Val Veghorst got free uh, Stengs and Veghorst not in many of the predicted lineups to start, but Cody Gakpo is. Uh, Nathan Ake playing at left back, it seems like, for the Netherlands or at centre back. He had two goals in qualifying. So, as we've seen it for Man City, he does have attack and a threat um, for the Netherlands. Uh, assists came from Dumfries, who got five in qualifying, and Veerman got two. And then clean sheets, it was five clean sheets out of eight matches for the Netherlands. So they did have um, really a good performance in the qualifiers. And if you look, they had only had two losses um, against France. So you'd have to imagine the bulk of their goals were actually conceded in those two games against France. On to my favourite options from Netherlands. Uh, Dumfries at 4.5 millions had six out of eight starts in qualifying. And like I said, he had five assists also. So really good attacking threat for him, playing either right back or right wing back. Uh, the only thing that I don't really like is Fringpong. Jeremy Fringpong has had a really good domestic season, but it does still seem like Dumfries is going to be trusted. Um, Fringpong did start a match recently on at right wing uh, rather than at right back or right wing back. But I can't see both of them starting in the same team. And I think that Dumfries is going to be the guy that's trusted to start ahead of him. Um, Dumfries had an 8.3 average points per game across qualifiers as well. So if he is playing and playing the bulk of the minutes, he will be a really, really good option. Four goals, six assists in his domestic season. And if you've played any of the previous uh, Euro tournaments, he is a player that always seems to do well in these. Um, Xavi Simons at 4 million. Again, has a few question marks about Dumfries. It's not perfect. He's 4 million. He started seven out of eight in qualifying, so you have to think that he is trusted. But he didn't get any attacking returns uh, in those seven out of eight qualifiers. So that is a little bit disappointing, considering he got 10 goals, 15 assists for Leipzig. But in a friendly, I think it was yesterday, he finally grabbed um, his first goal for the Netherlands. So he put that to bed. He was yet to score a goal for the Netherlands, but he's grabbed his first right before the start of the tournament. And I do think that little confidence boost will be good to take into this tournament. I think he'll be a good differential, uh, especially especially for this first fixture up against Poland. Uh, Poland have the second lowest predicted clean sheets in the group stages uh, and the third least goals as well. So that does look like the best fixture for the Netherlands to start the tournament. Um, I think Xavi Simons could be a good option there. 
Um, Virgil van Dijk. Now, I think, if I'm really honest, I think five million on Dream Team feels too overpriced for Virgil van Dijk. But it's hard to um, sort of ignore that he could be a centre-back taking penalties. Um, and he has gone on to score in back-to-back matches um, in these international friendlies. So if we quickly scroll back to the last slide, the last two friendlies against Canada and Iceland, he scored a goal in both of them. So taking a bit of goal scoring form into the group stages as well. And we've seen for Liverpool plenty of times that he can pop up in these big games with a goal. It's just that price point of five million that feels a little bit too overpriced. But I've just mentioned Poland don't have the best predicted numbers going into this um, tournament. Lewandowski is also set to miss the opener. So if there was ever a time you wanted to face Poland, it would be without Lewandowski. So maybe that first fixture against Poland could be a decent one to target the clean sheet, but also maybe hope for some attacking returns from Virgil van Dijk. Um, all I would say, though, is straight after that, you've got France, which looks like a game where you wouldn't want to have a um, Dutch defender, especially if they lost both matches in qualifying. So... I don't think that Virgil van Dijk looks like a perfect pick, but definitely is a little bit interesting with these recent attacking returns and penalties. On to France. So I mentioned it. They beat Netherlands twice in qualifying, but they were also unbeaten, um, drawing just one match to Greece in the final match where they rotated quite heavily anyway. So really, they could have probably won all eight matches if they wanted to. So 22 points out of eight matches. Uh, 3.6 goals per game, uh, but they might be a little bit misleading because they did score 17 against Gibraltar across two matches. So really did bump up those goals scored numbers at 0.4 goals against per game as well. Um, but again, Gibraltar, Republic of Ireland, Greece, not the toughest group, um, but they did a job on the Netherlands. Um, Pens would be Mbappe, main man. He's going to be in the bulk of teams. Free kicks and corners will be Griezmann, who will come on to him, but he's at a price point that really makes you think about it. Uh, goals, Mbappe got nine in qualifying. Giroud had three. Fafana, Turam and Komen all had two. Assists, Mbappe led the way again with five assists. So nine goals, five assists in just eight matches. Klaus had two and Komen had two. And then clean sheets, six out of eight for France. So a decent defence, it seems. They kick off facing Austria in the first match, which looks pretty good on paper. They then follow that up with the Netherlands, who got a decent record against. And then they play Poland in the last one. So France are one of the teams. Um, I do like their sort of fixtures the whole way through. And if you did have players, they could be a hold. Favourite options. Can't look any further than Kylian Mbappe. Uh, probably the best asset on the game, I'd say. Nine goals, five assists in qualifying. Eight goals, two assists at the recent World Cup or the last World Cup. And of course, is their penalty taker. He would have averaged 14 points per game in qualifying based on Dream Team points. And I've been asked this again. Um, ffstuff.co.uk. I've got a really handy database there. So just ffstuff.co.uk. There's a Euros tab along the top and then Euro qualifier stats. And you can have a look through the numbers there. Really, really good work from ffstuff.co.uk. Um, he averaged five player performance marks, um, which would have bagged him a bonus point in pretty much every game as well. So not just goals and assists, he can also get bonus. Um, Kylian Mbappe didn't play the last friendly. I've got the Sofa score lineup from there. Nil-nil draw against Canada. Uh, didn't play that one, but did come on as a sub. But I know nil-nil against Canada does look um, disappointing. But the whole time I was saying we need to wait for these friendlies, we need to wait for these friendlies. But actually, the friendlies have sort of turned up and you can quite tell that players are not wanting to get injured. They're not giving it everything. Uh, they're just waiting for this tournament to start. So, yeah, wouldn't read too much into it, but a little bit disappointing that we haven't had to, the chance to see all these lineups properly. Um, other options I found quite difficult, um, either due to pricing or squad depth. So, Feo Hernandez at 5 million and Griezmann at 6.5 are both top, top quality options and nowed for France. Um, there's no question of their position. 
but they just come at a really steep price. So 6.5 million for Griezmann and 5 million for Teo Hernandez. Um, when budget is really hard to come by as well. Uh, so I, I won't be starting with either of them in my team. But Griezmann looks particularly interesting. Um, I think he took something like six corners in that Canada match. Um, and his numbers were really, really good. Um, and I think he is going to chip in with quite a few assists and stuff like that. But yeah, seems to have a bit more of a creative role for France now, more than a, a goal scorer. Um, defensively, it's hard. I just mentioned Hernandez, but you've got Upamecano and Kunate, who seem like they're probably going to be the centre-backs. Um, I feel like Saliba should be starting in that centre-back pairing, but it doesn't seem like he's going to get his place. But he did play the recent friendly and look really, really good. I think Kunde playing right back probably seems a bit safer than the centre-backs. Um, but I do expect this France defence to be solid in the tournament. So if you do get it right, um, I think it could be a good one for you. But it just seems a little bit too um, worrying to start with a French defender because there could be rotation there. If you enjoyed the video so far, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing daily content throughout the Euros and we're building up to... Euro starting on Friday with the Dream Team Tonic podcast. Uh, we're going to be doing a live stream one hour before um, the deadline, the Dream Team deadline. So do keep an eye out for that one. Uh, do give a follow to the Dream Team Tonic podcast. Keep an eye out for our deadline stream we're going to be doing on Friday. We'll be answering all of your Dream Team Euro questions. So go over to the Dream Team Tonic podcast. I'll leave a link in the description below. On to... Poland next. Um, so actually had pretty poor form in qualifying. Finished third in the group behind Albania and Czechia. Um, three wins, two draws, three losses. So pretty poor form. And then they went on to qualify through the playoffs. So yeah, not an ideal qualifying campaign, but they still managed to get there. And actually their recent form hasn't been too badly. So in their international friendlies, they've actually won their last five, beating Latvia, Poland, uh, sorry, Latvia, Estonia, Wales, Ukraine and Turkey. So those two recent ones, Ukraine and Turkey, um, all the pre predicted numbers are saying that Poland are sort of one of the worst teams in the tournament, actually. But Ukraine, someone I've been looking at um, for players, they beat them 3-1 and then they beat Turkey, who I know a lot of people are keeping an eye on for their group as well. So, yeah, Poland going into the tournament with a decent bit of form, but they have just had the news that Lewandowski is going to be ruled out of that first fixture against the Netherlands. So, yeah, it looks like Lewandowski will be an avoid and it's going to be a big blow for Poland, but should be back during the tournament. Uh, penalties, I had down as Lewandowski. Free kicks, I had down as Lewandowski. Uh, corners, Zielinski. Maybe Zielinski takes penalties and free kicks. I'm not sure uh, who takes them when uh, Lewandowski is out. Lewandowski had three goals in qualifying. Uh, Pitrowski got three goals and Swiderski got two goals. Um, assists were Lewandowski and Zielinski. Uh, Lewandowski with two, Zielinski with one. Uh, clean sheets, not many in qualifying, just the three out of the eight fixtures. I mean, it's a very, very difficult group. Um, they're looking like they're going to um, sort of be favourites to finish bottom in the group. And I'd be really, really surprised if they get through. If they do, you'd have to think it would have to be one of the sort of third place finishes. But I just cannot see it myself. Um, not really any options that I'd look to pick. I had Lewandowski down up until I think it was yesterday where I saw that he was injured and ruled out. So... Yeah, Lewandowski, I still probably wouldn't have even picked him if he was fit, uh, just because the fact you've got Ronaldo, you've got Mbappe, you've got Kane, you've got Lukaku. There are so many good options. And even if you did want to punt on one of the cheaper um, strikers, you'd go for one that has a better group than this one. So for me, Poland are an avoid. Then finally, on to Austria. So they had an impressive finish to the groups. Uh, they finished second behind Belgium, which... It's, it's no real problem. Finished one point behind them, uh, but they had a good campaign. So six wins, one draw, one loss. Uh, won seven of their last eight games, with Belgium being the last team to beat them all the way back in October. Uh, so have good, uh, have had recent good form going into the tournament. 2.1 goals scored 
in qualifying and 0.9 goals conceded on average. Just the three clean sheets, though, out of the eight matches. Uh, the main man, David Alaba, does miss the tournament for injury, so you won't be picking him. I do think they have got some exciting options. Um, so set piece takers, um, Sabitza is on penalties. You did have recent penalties taken by Grigorich and Baumgartner. Um, they took penalties in the last game without Sabitza on the pitch. But Sabitza took the last two before that um, with everyone on the pitch. So I think Sabitza will be the penalty taker. He's also the free kick taker and corner taker. And it sort of plays a bit more of an advanced role um, for Austria, but we'll come on to that in a minute. Sibitza, four goals scored in qualifying, and also Gregoric had four. Baumgartner had three goals, and then assists, two for Sibitza and one for Baumgartner, who both of these players we're going to talk about in a second because they have had decent recent form as well. So three clean sheets in qualifying, not that great, and I don't think you're going to really want to favour the defence with this group. On to my favourite options from Austria. So I'm going to go with Sabitza at 3 million in midfield. He plays a more advanced role for Austria on the wing. Um, and you can probably see it from his attack and return. So only three starts, four sub appearances in qualifying. He is expected to start. Um, he had a 6.9 average in qualifying with four goals, two assists. He's taking the bulk of set pieces. He should be on penalties, corners and free kicks. Um, don't worry too much. I don't think that he hasn't been in the last two lineups for these recent friendlies. He's been on the bench, but a bit like how Bellingham um, hasn't played for England. Savitza was involved in the Champions League final um, against Real Madrid. So having a bit of an extended rest, but he is expected to be starting for Austria. So 6.9 average in qualifying, just £3 million um, and expected to be taking most of the set pieces. Uh, and penalties so I think that he looks like he could be a really really good option but obviously he is in a really difficult group you've also got Baumgartner at 2.5 million as a midfielder also looking really good value three goals two assists uh, started six out of eight so you could maybe argue that he's a bit more nailed than um, Sabitzer 7.1 average points as well in qualifying a goal and an assist in a recent a pre-tournament friendly against Serbia, followed by a goal against Switzerland in the most recent. So attacking free attacking returns in the last two friendlies going into the tournament. Uh, Sabitza and Baumgartner, I think, could be good options. And one thing I would say, um, <laughs> although this is kind of like the uh, group of death a little bit, um, you know, we've not seen the lineups. You want to have the most nailed players, but you also... If you do go for the more easy looking groups, you have got a chance that if they win their first two matches, there's rotation. Whereas I think Austria are going to be playing with everything needed for all three of the matches. So maybe there's a chance that they're going to have a bit more to play for and you might even see a bit more involvement from these uh, more budget midfielders. But I, overall, I still probably wouldn't go for it with that France match. I'd be looking at maybe Poland and then depending on what still to play for, maybe going against Netherlands. So yeah, one to keep an eye on. Um, I, I doubt they're going to be in my first draft, but I still do think that about Gartner and Savitza could do something in this tournament. That is everything for this episode. If you have any questions, please do leave them below in the comments. Um, I will be able to get back to them a lot quicker uh, than I was this weekend. Um, I will have Group E and Group F drop in within the next 24 hours. Um, then we'll be on to the Dream Team Tonic deadline stream on Friday. And I should be able to fit in a quick match day one preview before that on my channel. So do leave a like, do subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.